with Santino's bunch and Rigo's bunch and Florence Henderson. I give this a spoiled rotten food that should have been thrown in the garbage can about 17 years ago and then set on fire in a garbage dump. This is utter bullshit. I'm not even going to degrade my intelligence in even talking about this. Next segment. Next segment we had, uh, oh, we had a good segment. We had Edge versus Randy Orton in the mat in their matchup. Um, I'm even going to go over some play-by-play in this matchup. Okay, so the first four minutes of the match, this was actually a good match. I gave, like, this overall match, I'd give it a four, grilled chicken. But overall, like, the first four minutes, it was kind of back and forth. Orton was had, had his advantage, and then Edge got a boot to the face, and then, you know, got back in it. But then Orton got back in it, but then Edge had the upper hand going to the commercial break. So then we come back, and then um, yeah, Orton was going for his uh, rope, D- his uh, you know turnbuckle DDT. He's gonna go for it. Edge gets out of it, hits the gangrel and pale a DDT, got a two count, and then um, later like Edge went for a spear, but Orton kicked him like right as he went for it. That was pretty awesome. Like you know came running, bam, kicked him. It was awesome. Um, later Orton hit his hit his backbreaker. That's like one of his best moves as that backbreaker. And then the finish was uh, Jericho, like, had come out and distracted Randy Orton. Or, um, distracted... Yeah, he distracted Randy Orton. And then Edge had hit the edge matic which they don't call it that move, but uh, he actually pinned Orton with that. That's, like, the first time I've ever seen Edge actually pin someone with that move. And then post-matchup, um, Jericho hits Edge with a code breaker, and then Orton RKO's Edge. And then Ever Board comes out and attacks Randy Orton. You know, gives him a jumping, like, Mortal Kombat kick to the head. He goes for airborne, and right as he freaking does it, like, he's doing the spin around, and when he comes around, Orton just jumps up RKO. It was fucking awesome. I thought that was that was easily the highlight of the show, that RKO was awesome. They showed it, like, five more times, but it was worth it. It was awesome. I mean, it wasn't so much, like, Orton doing the RKO was amazing. It was just the timing of it. The timing was phenomenal. So I'll give him props on that one. So, yeah, overall, the match was a grilled chicken for sure. Um, next backstage segment we have, we basically had Nexus beating up John Morrison. Um, I thought their beating was a little bit better than the, uh, Bronx Root Beer, good stuff. I thought the beating was better than the Yoshitatsu one, so I give this three and a half, three and a half, which is an apple, and then someone gives you half of another apple. It was pretty good. Next, we have another promo. We have the Miz promo. Basically, he's saying that talk is cheap, and then they show the recap of him attacking our truth and then basically him saying, you know, like, I didn't need a weapon or a ladder to do that. I did that with my bare hands or whatever. So then he's going on, and then, the, you know, the GM says, Yo, Cole, I got an email for you. He doesn't say that, but he should. I wish he would say, Yo, Cole, I got an email for your punk ass. He doesn't say it, but... So, um... Uh, Michael Cole answers his email, and then I guess the GM, since our truth can't compete in Money in the Bank, he set up Mark Henry to be his replacement. So Mark Henry comes out, and I was thinking, like, oh, geez, Miz is going to get buried, right? So, like, Mark Henry gets his offense in, and then, um, I don't know, like, I, I thought Mark Henry's little, not even, wasn't even much of a beatdown, really. Basically, he comes on the outside, he charges at Miz, Miz moves out of the way, he crashes into, like, the steel podium thing that the GM computer sits on. And, uh, then Miz, like, just kind of, like, gets his garbage can, dumps some garbage on him, then hits him with a garbage can. Mark Henry's supposed to be, like, you know, hurt real bad and laid off from that. I like how they, you know, wanted to have Miz go over in this, kind of look like a big threat. But they really should have did a better job with this. I know they can't use chairs, but why not at least, you know, use what I use on Classic. Use a cookie sheet or, or something to knock his I punk ass out. Because him just charging into something is going to hurt, but it's not going to knock him out. So, that's just my opinion on that. But, because of the good promo, I give it a grilled chicken. It was pretty good. Next, we have uh, the Florence Henderson guest announcing the Santino vs. Rigo Bunch. Um, before this match even started, I, I graded it a yogurt. Does anybody really want to watch this? I watched Insurrection 2002 earlier. William Rigo versus Spike Dudley. Yeah, that's right. And he was doing the brass knuckle thing at the time. Why can't WWE let him do that again? 
you know, with the power of the punch and the brass knuckles. That was good shit. Why don't they let him do that anymore? Why are they burying Regal? I don't understand. Kali, one with a chop to the head and doink the clown. That's all I'm going to say about that. A yogurt. Okay, next week backstage, we have an Edge promo. And this it wasn't so much a bad promo. It's just, this was a Randy Orton heel promo. Edge basically says, like, he's got this voice on the back of his head that, you know, deprives him of you know, compassion and morals and all that stuff. And he talks to this voice. It was, it was Randy Orton's voice song. So, Edge had Randy Orton's gimmick. I don't know. So, I gave that a, a uh, Brussels sprout. I like Edge, but yeah, that's Randy Orton's heel gimmick thing. So, I don't know. You ever notice how WWE also gives Edge all these nicknames? You know, Rated R Superstar, Master Psychologist, Ultimate Opportunist. Is, are they trying to make him, like, one-up Triple H? I'm trying to think Triple H's nicknames. The Game, the Cerebral Assassin, the King of Kings. You know, one of those guys needs to get another nickname to try to one-up the other one. Uh, too many nicknames. Just stick with one. That's my opinion. All right, next we had Sheamus and Evan Bourne at neck backstage. Bourne was holding his neck from getting that RKO earlier. I don't know. Sheamus talked some trash, and then NXT guys attack uh, Bourne. And then Sheamus comes back, and he's like, little Evan Bourne. He's like, that you got to learn, fella. And then the uh, Nexus guys come up to him, and Skip Shuffle looks like he's going to attack him, and then Sheamus takes off running like a baby. He's like, we're seeing his locker room. So, so then we get to our main event of the night. We get um, the six-on-one handicap match between Nexus versus Cena. Um, it was all right. I give it, I give it an apple, I guess. Not that like the match was good, but like, I don't know. I was surprised that uh, Nexus won. Basically, Justin Gabriel won with the 450 splash because it was it was kind of back and forth. Like Cena had the upper hand at the beginning. Then Nexus took over for a while. Then Cena did his whole, you know, five-move comeback on, on uh, Wade Barrett. And then he got a blind tag to Sheffield. Sheffield hits his clothesline. Um, I think Otunga hit, hit his spine buster move. And then Justin Gabriel hit the 450 and pinned Cena. So then they're beating him, beating him up after the match. And then um, Sheamus comes out with steel chair. You know, it makes the save. And then Cena has a steel chair. You know, and they're fighting him off. And... At the end of the show, they're fighting off Nexus, and that's how the show ended. So, I was kind of confused by this, because don't they have a pay-per-view, like a steel cage match against each other? You figure that they would have fought off Nexus, and then Sheamus would have hit Cena with the chair or something, and said, Cena, no offense, I'm I'm on your side against Nexus, but at the pay-per-view, fuck you, I'm taking, I'm winning, my, keeping my championship. You know, why didn't they do something like that? Doesn't Doesn't make any sense. So, I don't know. So, I gave that a, a three, right? So, based off my uh, mathematics of the show here, I'm going to do some mathematic calculations for you right now. Let's see. We got two. We got, let's see. We had a Brussels sprout, a yogurt, an apple. That's six. Uh, grilled chicken. A, another grilled chicken. That's 18. Three and a half. That's 21 and a half. Another grilled chicken. 25 and a half. Yogurt, 26, Brussels spout, 28, and apple, 31. So that's 31 out of, uh, I fucked up my math here. All right, let's see. That was 31 and a half out of potentially 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So 31 and a half out of 55. Using a calculator equals. So therefore, Rob really doesn't pass this show by much. Let me use my cell phone here to figure out what the rating for Raw is. I'm actually using my cell phone to figure out the rating for Monday Night Raw. By the way, I'm going to edit some of this crap out, just so you know. I've got to figure out how to use my cell phone here to figure out how calculator here we go 31.5 divided by 55 therefore this show rates a 57 a 57% show